do a little garbage picking probably in the next hour or so uh, get 20 or 30 bucks worth of uh, shred uh, steel uh, light iron whatever you want to call it and it usually isn't hard uh, you know a couple of treadmills and I'm good and those things get thrown out all the time exercise bikes or pipe or whatever so plan on doing that I'll be probably done at 10 ish 10 or 11 then I'm gonna take a load of pallets because basically I'm just scrapping pallets and scrapping um, scrapping pallets and scrapping metals and I, I collect them both so I take them over to my storage unit when I get enough for a for a load but I have more pallets and I can shake a stick at right now so I need to take a load um, and you know, I get two bucks a piece also I was talking to uh, the scrapyard and I think the scrapyard is gonna buy some pallets from me so that would be cool that currently they're buying pallets for five dollars a piece and if I'm taking them up to the pallet yard for um, for two bucks a piece, I turn on the wrong one I gotta make a big U-turn here I have always had issues with directions. Oh my goodness. It, it, it's, it's just a lifelong thing. It's nothing I can just snap out of, I guess. Uh, I wish I could. So, yeah, so then I'll take those pallets up there and I'll probably get 50 or 60 bucks for those pallets. And then uh, come back and I have to go to uh, uh, to college and pick up my math textbook taking my college math class um, yeah one math class left and I'll have my associate's degree I know I'm a 50 year old guy getting my associate's degree that's so funny um, but yeah and then uh, so I'll get my math book and my daughter's taking some classes there so I'll uh, drop her off I think I'm gonna do my homework my math homework while she's in her class so uh, yeah and so that's today for Tuesday that'll probably wrap it up I still have to put up these shelving units in my storage unit because uh, my storage unit is, is at times it becomes a pile of crap and that pile is not not easily gone it, it just requires more effort to throw stuff into a pile and then sift through the pile and whatever. <clears throat> so I got these these shelves, uh, some really nice, tall, you know, almost industrial type shelves. Um, they're they're definitely good garage shelves. And my storage unit's ten by fifteen, so uh, that should uh, help with some space. And you know, so I can put stuff into bins. You know, I can put my aluminum and I can put my copper and my bare bright copper and, and stuff in into bins and when I get enough to do a load I'll I'll take that this is a this is ideal over here ideal industries um, and you know uh, tools and things like that it, it's it's a massive operation I'd love to get their pallet um, their pallet gig I see a couple guys in there some really th there's this there's this company out here pallet pirates or something like that and uh, I mean these these guys they, they they give us scrappers and pallet guys a real bad name because they'll they BS these uh, these companies and say yeah we'll just take all your pallets and really they just keep the 48 by 40s that are valuable they take the little pallets or the odd size ones or whatever and they go and they, they do illegal dumping um, I've actually rolled right up on pallet dude uh, in a dumpster area at a um, at our strip mall um, by Target, and just dumping away these things behind uh, these dumpsters, and it's like, dude, what are you doing? I didn't confront him. I probably should have. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, if he's idiot enough to to do that, he's idiot enough to do other things. So, all right. So it looks like we have a little bit of metal there, but I'm not gonna. It's attached to a lot of wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video till I, till I find something good here. Okay, so I'm uh, actually trying to catch up and pass up my nemesis here. This is the guy 
that will eat up all of my scrap metal. Yeah, I need to stay in front. But I don't quite know what direction he's going, so. Uh, scrapping, scrapping, scrapping. You know, it's a consistent 20 bucks an hour um, doing this. And, and it's not just about the cash, actually. There is a therapeutic value in doing some scrappage. Uh oh, I should look at my rearview mirror. Yeah. Because uh, the garbage man just um, just turned, so. Right side of the road here. Make a left on old Locust. Turn on Loki. Uh oh, there's my nemesis again. <laughs> Be funny. Oh, he's going down the alley. Oh, some alley jacks. Okay. I smell what you're stepping in. So I'm gonna cruise over here, and I don't think he's uh, been down this way. But no, it's like I was saying before, it's a consistent 20 bucks an hour. Uh, but also, you, I find some really cool stuff. You know, tools and... I don't know if you guys have come across fight trash yet. That's an amazing thing. I feel bad about it. But, like, when the dude doesn't come home or, or whatever. and uh, What is this? Odd sheep trash. And, and his wife or girlfriend just basically throws away his garage. I came across snap-on tools and, um, sounds terrible, but I could tell it was fight trash because it was the dude's porno collection mixed in with, um, the ratchets and hammers and, and all kinds of stuff, so, yeah, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a, a woman, but, uh, I have a feeling it was fight to trash, dude messed up, so I'm gonna pause this and, get some uh, stumble across some some scrappage I see some aluminum aluminum I think I'd be plastic no that's oh man scrappage right on right freaking on oh yeah all right I'm gonna put some gloves on and use some scrappage good stuff so I put that aluminum back in my truck, and I think uh, I think Tucker would say, "Scrap for the boys, aluminum for the boys." <laughs> yeah, you know the cool thing that I noticed with uh, Tucker is that um, he's just being himself, you know, and it makes it okay. I, I don't know, he know how to say it. When someone decides to truly be themselves, it gives others like myself. And I got anxiety and all kinds of other just crap in my life. But you know what? It gives me permission to be myself too. Um, I see some odd sized trash. It looks like plastic. I don't know. What do we got here? I see bolts, but it's all plastic. But like I was saying, when, when someone decides to be themselves, it gives me permission to be myself. You know, myself's weird. You know, well, to me, it's not weird. But to other people, it might be a little strange. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it just allows me to to be me, you know. And being a you know 49 year old single dude, um, you know, just kind of winging it through life, and you know, net worth of zero. Um, but you know what? I'm still a decent guy, and um, I care about other people, and I try to do the the next right thing. Um, if somebody needs some help, I will stop everything. I'll stop everything and help them. Ooh, I see a big old pile of trash. I bet there's some metal in that. What do you think? There's some metal in there. Nope. Might just a mattress. But that's one thing I do look for is some odd sized trash. So like I said, I, you know, just try to be a decent dude and do the next right thing and um, be honest and um, you know, and sometimes my attention deficit kicks in. I'm, I get quite excitable, and, um, and I get 
oblivious about stuff and forgetful and I hurt people's feelings and I totally don't even mean to. I don't even realize I do it. Um, but, uh, but like I was saying with Tucker, it's, uh, you know, he just is himself. And so I decided, um, you know, my, I think it's what, my third video, fourth video, whatever, that I'm just going to be me. Um, so, what do I see? It looks like kind of a cool old school chair thing. So, anyway, I'm going to pause this until we stumble across some... Ooh, I see something odd-shaped. I love me some odd-shaped trout. Oh, it sticks. No! No! I ain't got no time for no sticks. What's that cul-de-sac? I will definitely do the cul-de-sac because I don't think a lot of other folks will do that. i got to make sure my camera stays nice and above here. The neighbors watching me hold up my camera. What's that guy doing? Is that the government? I mean, this is the second the second house that I've seen that actually collected their rainwater. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a gutter goes right into their into that big bucket, and there's a there's some stuff like uh, spigots on it. A couple of them. Uh, I think it's just cool as can be. Cool as can be. What's up, squirrel? It's had it. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a nut too. Yeah, you do your thing, man. You be you. Like my step son would say, man, you do you, man. There's a lot of wisdom in that. A lot of wisdom. All right, I think this is the area that my nemesis has already been through, the garbage man. So I need to find the area that he hasn't been because it's... 9.34 in the morning, which is definitely a late start. I got to start about 8.30. Um, this is no outlet. I like no outlets. Unless scrappers go down here. I don't think there's very many scrappers actually here at all. I come across just a couple. And, uh, and the couple are... Um, yeah, and I want, to, I want to be supportive, and I want to... Um, Actually, no, I, I take that back. There was one really cool scrapper dude. Um, yeah, a really cool scrapper dude named Dobbs. And I uh, met him. Man, he's a cool dude. You can just tell that, you know, he loves God. And he's just, he's trying to do the next right thing. And, you know, poor is all get out. I shouldn't say poor. I guess we're, we're really rich compared to the average human on this planet. Uh, so I, I don't want to diminish that at all because yeah, compared to the uh, 7 billion people on this planet, yeah, I'm, I am, you know, I, I got a, a big operational vehicle that I'm on, you know, oh, there's my nemesis, the eater of scrap, the consumer of my money, yes, I love those guys, they're hard workers, hard workers, man. Alright. It looks like he hasn't gone down here straight. I'm going to kind of look in my rearview mirror and see what direction he goes. Is he heading a right or a left? So whatever direction he goes, I'm going to go the other direction. Oh, he's going behind me. Alright, so that means I'm on the exact right path. So if I trip across some scrap, um, he hasn't gotten there yet. Yeah, then later on today, I got to, yeah, actually not later on today, probably about 45 minutes from now, I'm going to take what I've found so far to the scrap yard, which is only like 10 bucks worth. I don't know, that aluminum is, I don't know what it'll be, we'll, we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll do some value recording of, of that aluminum. And, uh, yeah, then I'm going to take those pallets, it's about a 20 minute ride to the pallet yard. Those pallets, that'll be 50 or 60 bucks. No matter how many I want to put on this truck. Because those pallets get heavy and it, it rides kind of hard. Um, and I don't want to be messing up this truck. You know, it's a half ton truck, so it means I can safely uh, drive around with a um, thousand pounds of pallets. Which I don't know, I should weigh a pallet and just see what an average pallet is. They say 30 pounds or so. 
Um, so 300 pounds would be 10 pallets. Uh, so 900 pounds would be 30 pallets. So I don't know, but yeah, some of them are really heavy. Um, I, mean, I like the light pine ones, but some of them are hardwood. And got, they're not even two by fours. Or, Three by fives are they're really thick. So, oh, there's garbage man. Garbage man. All right, well, I'm gonna pause this until I find something kind of cool to show you. If I can. So I'm driving through this neighborhood. And I've only lived in this town for about six months and I've only been scrapping really for two months. Um, but I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever been driving through a neighborhood and um, that you're not really familiar with and you start getting wrapped around the axle and <laughs> driving around the same road. And, and then I, this happens to me and it drives me nuts that I will think I just left a neighborhood and I drive you know let's say up a main road you know half mile or whatever and, and then I start cruising through the, another neighborhood and then wind up back driving across an area that I just got done seeing what is this a lightsaber yeah and that's an example I, I saw that lightsaber earlier it's like I don't even I get so lost and it so I'm a hot mess here. Speaking of hot, it's hot today. Yesterday was 94, 95. Today's supposed to be in the 90s. 70% humidity. So, yeah. But you know, it's it's actually nice. It's it's 9:50 and and uh, it, it's a cool breeze. You know, I got the got the windows down. It's nice. All right, so I'm going to, I think I've already been in this neighborhood. Yeah, I have, no, actually, I haven't gone to the right. So I'm gonna go to the right and then up to the left. Here. But yeah, I get, I get confused. I need to just map it out, just get to know it a little bit better. I mean, I think it'll come with time. But right now, it's frustrating. Because, I mean, really, who wants to be just running in circles and, um, yeah. Because I'm, I'm up against the clock when it comes to the garbage, man. I mean, people bring their trash out sometimes the night before. And, I don't know, being an older dude, my eyes, I just can't stand trying to pick at night. Ooh, what do we have here? Looks like an odd trash. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's metal. So I'm gonna grab it. Metal garbage can. Well, I don't wanna make a mess here. So yeah, that's probably, I don't know, five cents of iron, of light iron, shred, whatever you want to call it. But I'll stop for a nickel, you know. It's, um, you know, I got, uh, I got hurt in the military a while back, and I mean, it wasn't combat related or anything, I mean, I don't need to get into the details, but, um, so... Yeah, so I don't have a 9 to 5, and I think this is actually way more fun than a 9 to 5. Um, but I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I'm not looking forward to humping those 30 pallets today, because it's actually making my service-connected injuries worse. You know, some people's like, oh, man, you're not disabled. You know, which, you know, to kind of not and kind of am. And uh, so, but I'm, you know, lifting those pallets. You know, I try to lift smart and, and 
whatever. But yeah, it's uh, it's causing some problems. It's, it's got this big foot long scar in the front of my gut, and um, it's it's herniated. So in a couple spots, and I don't know. Not not only is it just kind of painful to have your guts popping through your stomach muscle, but it's um it's so gross sounding and I cannot I mean my anxiety goes through the roof because you know the average person getting a bubble guts you know is gross enough but when you have intestines sitting right below some super thin scar tissue it is the grossest sounding wet fart disgust that you could possibly imagine and I don't know when my stomach starts going nuts I mean I just want to run and escape and whatever and yeah, they gave me this little hernia. Uh, it's like a corset. <laughs> this little hernia belt. And it's, um, I mean, it kind of helps out a little bit. I mean, sometimes, like, when I'm sitting in class, because I'm going through a, um, a vocational rehabilitation program for disabled veterans. So I, when I'm sitting in class, sometimes when my stomach starts going nuts and it's so gross, I'll take a book and actually put it right where your belly button is. You know, because my hernias are like right above my belly button, and just to just to be able to muffle that disgusting sound. Oh my goodness! And you know, and some idiots they're like, "Oh man, let's go to the bathroom. Why don't you do a little, 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 little. whatever?" You, you don't understand. I can't do anything about it. Won't you stop eating? Yeah. What? Yeah. So, oh, it's Tuesday at ten. I hear the sirens going off. So yeah, it's um. So yeah, doing the scrapping, you know. Um, I mean, just working in an office environment, man, having my stomach going nuts, man, it was so embarrassing. I remember just sitting in a conference room one time with a bunch of other people, and just having these sounds coming from my gut. I mean, there's there's just nothing. There's nothing more distracting to the entire group, and it's coming from my own body. You know, and I talked to my to my doctor about it. They're like, well, just get over it. It's no big deal. What other people think of you, so what? It's it's not that simple. You know, you try sitting there sounding like a wet fart, you know, for an hour during a meeting or, you know, when you're, um, when you're trying to talk to a coworker and your stomach's going nuts and my anxiety's, you know, I got anxiety anyway, you know. So I say all that to say this. Doing this scrapping, not only is it good for the environment, it's good to get this uh, stuff not into the landfills and into, uh, but I'm actually pulling it out, taking it to the scrapyard. The scrapyard is actually going to turn into a car door of a Chrysler or to a refrigerator or something, and it's it's actually going to be something else. But that's a good thing. But better yet is that I don't have a boss. I'm not standing behind someone working as they're hearing my stomach gurgle the grossest gurgles in the world. Um, and I'm not having to deal with that because I'm, I'm out here scrapping. Yeah, it's kind of a problem when it comes to my hernias and lifting stuff. And, and yeah, it's actually making things worse. Um, but you know what? It, uh, it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable because I don't have to deal with people looking at me all just, you know, like, ew, what is that sound? Um, you know, and I have a few people that, that know me, that, that I hang around, that I'm friends with, and they still will say, ooh, was that your stomach? I mean, how many times can you possibly say, was that your stomach? Yeah. I've had some friends that say that to me every single time they hear some, some stomach noises, and it's not like I can help it. Normal people have their intestines under like an inch worth of, of really thick, dense stomach muscle. And you, you don't hear it's all muffled. You know, mine not only is it through that, but it's scar tissue doesn't have any fat underneath it. So it's this paper thin scar with a thumb sized hunk of intestine sticking out of it. It's, it's uh, I just. It just makes me want to run and hide. All right. Thanks for listening. Um, 
think I got a little bit too transparent and too open just now. But oh well. Oh well. But <laughs> yeah, doing the strap life. Yeah, I like it. Maybe I should turn up here. I've not been in this neighborhood, but it looks like apartments. And I usually do, um, yeah, I'm only doing this two months, so I don't have this really unusual, but doing dumpsters in large apartment complexes or in industrial parks, something I like to do on the weekends. Because there's, there is five sections to the town that I live in. Um, so there's a there's a garbage morning on Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday and Sunday I don't ever see any garbage people, and there's no designated neighborhoods for garbage pickup. So that's when I like to do the uh, yeah, just kind of just peeking through the industrial dumpsters to see if there's any uh, copper or aluminum or whatever, and then um, yeah, so I don't know what section. So I don't know if that's garbage day. It's not garbage day over there. So that's actually a different section. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna head back to this my storage unit, my little workshop, and uh, sort what I got out, and then take it to the scrapyard. So I'll talk to you guys in a bit. All right, heading to the scrapyard. I'm going to the scrapyard. It pays a little bit less for aluminum, like a penny less. It's like 30 cents a pound. I think, unless he gives me aluminum breakage, which I hope he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of rusted bolts and some nails in the siding. I don't know. So, yeah, got my scrap in the back. It's just aluminum. Yeah. Following uh, the UPS truck here. But, yeah, the scrapyard is, is like a quarter mile from my storage unit so the other place is a couple miles away um i don't know four or five miles away but it's uh no three miles away, four miles away. Uh, and it pays a little bit more they are more picky absolutely more picky and they're under some new management so the guys uh uh the uh, employees are kind of you know feeling a little bit of pressure so yeah some scrap yardage Good stuff. All right, I'm gonna pause this guy. All right, so it looks like I got 19 buckaroonies for 16 pounds at 43 cents. I think that's the maths, right? So, oh no, he gave me some, a little bit of breakage. So seven cents for 20 pounds of breakage, then 43 cents for 16. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm cool with that. So good stuff. Get out of here. Doing the scrapyard. Sometimes I wonder if my my nails my nails are gonna get in my tire. This place is awesome. It's just cool stuff. Going to the scrapyard. Some cars over there. Man, some ancient whatever. Yeah, not bad. 19 buckaroonies. Now I gotta go. I don't want that stuff to go flying around. I probably should stop. So, yeah, good stuff. So now it's 11.05. Um, I'm not feeling it. It's like 91 out and 70% humidity. Um, yeah. I'm not feeling the old pallet things. Because, um, yeah, those are heavy. But you know what? They're not going to recycle themselves. So I'll feel better if I just go do it, knock it out, be done with it, and just finish my day. Um, yeah, because I have to be back at 3 o'clock to pick up my daughter to take her to college. Uh, and then I have some college work I got my math class I got homework to do um, so yeah anyway peace out I don't know I might film the the pallets I don't know we'll see